All right, my name is Richard Pickering, and I'm, I'm making this video really for my family and my friends and, <clears throat> excuse me, the people in my life that I love. Uh, the video is really in response to these uh, protests, these Occupy Wall Street protests, and my aim in this video is to, uh, to just be sure that, that my family and my friends maybe understand the situation and maybe understand the severity of the situation and then for myself to look at the the individual uh, complaints and you know see the see what's legitimate what's not what what is the cause or what seems to be the cause what is the effect you know what's the effect of what's happening what are they asking for what what is happening and and basically what I found is that they're they're you know they're, they have legitimate, legitimate complaints, uh, you know, uh, one of the main ones being that corporations are greedy, you know, Wall Street is greedy, of course Wall Street is greedy, I mean, that's, that's not really a question, do they do immoral things, and, uh, are they corrupt, liars, cheats, thieves, absolutely, you know, I mean, that's just the truth, that's a legitimate complaint, uh, <clears throat> so what is, what is, I mean, what is to be done? Well, I mean, it, it's kind of a hard question, but it's one that you could ask and it's one that we could answer. If you really look at the situation and why, I mean, you have to ask, why are corporations greedy? Why is Wall Street greedy? And, and when you ask that question, then it brings you to how, is, how are these businesses set up and how is it different from a small business that usually isn't greedy and usually is uh, fair and, you know, has good values and morals. and, and you know the difference really lies in the fact that uh, when you when an entrepreneur starts a business and they start a small business it's an individual or or you know a small group of individuals who run the business themselves and have uh, have <coughs> direct direct contact with their employees so they have a moral and uh, a compassionate connection with their employees so when they make decisions they make them with that with with their own morals and and individual situations tie in and that's how they make their decisions that's how they pay people that's how they get the insurance they get or you know that's how they make their decisions is based on individual cases between them and their employees and they know their employees so there's a there's a there's a intimate connection between the employees and the the owner of the business so their decisions are usually a lot more on a moral basis of what's right and what's wrong as far as uh you know morals and values so <clears throat> how come that doesn't tie over to a corporation well the i mean the the real reason is is because when a business gets big enough that they become a corporation and they get stockholders and what happens is they 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 no longer have uh individual relationship with employees and they never no longer have an, usually an individual uh person making decisions what they have is stockholders and then they'll have a board a small group who makes decisions for the collective for a collective group for for their stockholders and for their company so <laughs> Basically, it creates a socialistic type of atmosphere. It, it, it's, a, it's a group or a board that makes decisions, and their decisions are based on what is best for the company, what is best for the shareholders. And it's not because they're evil, and it's not because they're, uh, it's not because they're immoral. It's because that is their job. They, it, it would be immoral for them to make any other decisions. When they make a decision, it has to be basically has to be about what is more profitable for the company what is going to bring our shareholders more money because it's not them they're not making decisions if a small business makes a decision and they decide to help say this employee or make things better for this employee it's it's coming out of them okay when you have a board of people making a decision and they they can't decide you know what i want to give my employees this because it's not their money they are there being paid to make a decision that is for the collective group, for what is better for everybody, 
what is better for the company itself, what is going to move the company forward, make more profit, and, and be a better return for the shareholders. So that's how they make their decisions. And, and, and it's not wrong and it's not immoral. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the companies don't make totally, totally wrong and immoral decisions because they do. And if they break the law or break the rules, then absolutely they should be shut down and even arrested and thrown in jail, and that's the truth. <clears throat> but the decisions they make once it's become that type of situation is, I mean, it's the same reason that socialism doesn't work in an economic for an economic policy for a country because you make collective decisions instead of individual decisions and collective decisions are cutthroat and that's how corporations are and that's why they are the way they are uh, so my answer to that is what what can we do what could we do to make things better and my my only real answer is you know uh, prosecute people who do things wrong definitely and handle the legal end of it which we don't do I mean, who, they haven't thrown people who have done immoral things in jail, okay? These people who took billions of tax dollars and just kept them as bonuses or whatever, if, if it was against the law, which I don't think it was, but whatever. I mean, if, if any of these people have broken the law, then send them to jail, you know? I mean, totally, prosecute them. I mean, take them to court first, don't just uh, send them to jail, but yeah, you know? Uh, make sure, take them to jail, give them a trial, and lock them up. But my, my, my only true answer to, to kind of fix the, the main problem that I see the corporations have really is that they make a decision and one of their major financial decisions usually has to do with going overseas. And that's fine to have foreign trade, but our problem is that our government doesn't properly regulate foreign trade, which is insane because it's one of the few powers given to them in the Constitution. They have the power to regulate foreign trade they don't do a very good job of it because we trade with countries like China. We trade with countries who exploit their people. We trade with countries that have no regulation. They uh, have, I mean, you know, every, everybody knows. We kind of look the other way and shrug our shoulders and say whatever, but the truth is is that we trade with countries that enslave their people. And that's our main problem as far as that goes. We can't compete because we're allowed to trade with countries that don't have the regulations we have, don't have to pay their people, don't have to give their people a safe place to work, don't have to give their people anything, really. I mean, they can get them sick, work them to death, and kill them. I mean, that's the truth. And we trade with these countries, and that's, that's where our real true problem lies, is the fact that we trade with countries that uh, enslave and are immoral towards their people and don't have freedom. And that's something the federal government, and that's something that we could definitely change. And... <clears throat> I think it would help the entire, I mean, there's still a lot of problems on Wall Street, I'm not saying that, uh, but this is, this is a, a, a fixable situation that doesn't require revolution, which is <laughs> basically this is what's being asked for. But anyway, I kind of need to move on because I'll, I'll go on forever, but I believe one way to fix that situation is to limit trade with countries that are willing to regulate, have regulations for their people and, and, and pay their people and take care of them and treat them as human beings. And in doing so, it costs more money to make objects and products because it costs more money to have regulation than actually pay people. So then we could actually compete. I mean, that's just the truth. All right, so the next, uh, the next complaint that a lot of uh, these, these kids and people that are occupying have is is the fact that education, the price of education is through the bank, or I mean through the roof, and they owe, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans. And this is a pretty legitimate complaint. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's a really horrible situation. You know, I've, I've looked into it, and you want to know something that nobody talks about it, and nobody says anything about it, but the education bubble the education bubble dwarfs the housing bubble. It's 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 unreal. The 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 price of education has risen more in the last 20 years than anything else on planet Earth. It has shot up through the roof. And so what is the complaint? The complaint is these greedy bankers left me with a bunch of debt. Well, sounds almost legitimate, but then you got to think about this, okay? First of all, 
banks don't set the price of education. So who sets the price of education? Who is responsible for the price of education going up through the roof? I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's it's the fastest. I mean, it blows this is the truth. It blows the housing housing market out of the water. It's the biggest financial bubble in our entire economic system is education and nobody talks about it. Why? Because the bubble's created by universities, by teachers, by unions. These are the people that set the price for college. All right? <clears throat> I mean, that's just the truth. Banks have nothing to do with setting the price. Banks have nothing to do with the fact that it costs a hundred thousand dollars to go to a nice school. You know? They, they don't. The, what banks do is loan you the money. I mean, what... In what way is it the bank's fault that you were misled into spending a hundred thousand dollars on education and couldn't get a job when you got done with it? All right. There's a big. I, we've all, and this is all of our entire society has been indoctrinated in this. I mean, everybody knows if you don't go to college and you don't get a good degree and you don't spend a lot of money on education, then you're not going to be anything. Well, that's just not true. It's not true at all. The majority of people that go to college don't use their degrees because the truth of the matter is the majority of professors are more, are, are, aren't, not all of them, but the majority of them aren't concerned with educating our children. The majority of them are concerned with indoctrinating and, and, and pushing an agenda. Most of them are hardcore socialists and that's the truth. I mean, that's not a, I mean, university... <clears throat> universities are extremely, extremely left-wing liberal. I mean, and it's not a secret. They hide behind their tenure. They hide behind their tenure, and that's how they keep their jobs, and that's how they keep... Uh, that's how they're able to, you know, I mean, you, you can look. Look who's out there. Look who's in the streets. It's not a, it's not a question. These, these kids are out there, and they have legitimate gripes, but not really. I mean, uh, if you went to a bank and got a loan and entered into a contract with a bank and they loaned you money so that you could go to school because that's what you wanted to do and then you get out and you can't get a job you're not void from paying back the school or I mean the bank okay you you still owe the money to the person that you borrowed it from because the, the school okay the schools got paid the hundred grand that went to the school they got their money you still owe it to the bank but the universities, these universities have, these universities have billions, billions of dollars, billions. This is the, it's a huge, you know, most people don't pay attention to it, but it's, it's one of our biggest hidden economic failures is education. And it's, it's solely created by the professors, by the universities and by unions. I mean, they have jacked the prices up. They have created the situation, and that's the truth. I mean, you know, and then you have them, and, and, and you have them pushing these kids out to go, to go get these banks because you're in debt, and it's not fair, you know? It's not fair. Well, who really put them in debt? Who really put them in debt? It wasn't the banks, okay? I'm not in debt on my house because the bank forced me to take a loan. I'm in debt on my house because I wanted to own a home. All right, and if I wake up tomorrow and my home's only worth half of what I paid for it, I, I still owe the money, and I and I and I plan on honoring that because that's the deal I made. You know, it, it's it's life, and it happens. But it's it's just I mean we have to look at the situation and say who's really causing the problem, and now what's happening now. Okay, and what are these kids asking for? What are, not really these kids, what are these, what are these radicals asking for? I mean, who's in the streets, all right? Who have we seen in the streets, if you've been paying attention to this? It's hardcore socialists, all right? And they're pushing these kids to ask for revolution. Most of these kids don't even know what revolution is. But why, I mean, who is it? It's these, I mean, it's professors. You have Cornell West out there, and these kids are following his chance, and, and he's, He's, it's not a secret. He has tenure. He can't be fired. He 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 he's a socialist. You have uh, Van Jones. He's a a communist. You have Francis Fox Piven. She's hardcore socialist. I mean, it, it, it's it's Piven. 
from Cloward and Piven, you know, collapse the system. I mean, what's happening right now is her plan that her and her husband made, you know, it is to cause chaos, collapse the system. That's, that's, that's what's happening. I mean, and she's in the streets. She's asking for these kids to rise up, ask for revolution. This is, you know, these people are all taking from you. You don't have a chance. You have no chance at life. You're, you're slaves. You're, I mean, you know, who, I mean, you have Michael Moore. He's, he's been out there. Who is he? I mean, he hates capitalism. He's a socialist. Uh, that's just the truth. These, these hardcore radical socialists are pushing their agenda. They're using this situation that they've created to push their agenda to cause a collapse and to, they want to fundamentally change our country. I mean, that's just the truth, you know, it's, it sounds radical and it sounds crazy, but it's not, it's the truth. You can look, they're not being secretive about it. I mean, the, you look at the signs the protesters are holding, they're for socialism, they're for communism, they're for, uh, you know, they're for revolution, all right? Revolution is a change in government. It's not Wall Street reform. Revolution is a change in government. That means the end of our constitution. That means the, a change in our framework, okay? And, and I promise you, our framework is not the problem. We, our, our framework was created by God. Whether you want to believe that, whether you believe in God, whether you don't, I, I'm sorry, but our framework is divine. Our framework, it, get, it doesn't get, there's nothing better than our constitution. It's a simple document. It, if you, I'm sure you guys have read it, but you, we probably need to read it again and again and again. It's, it's just a document that's created to protect us from our government and to keep the power with us. And there's no better framework in the world. Our free market, our capitalist system, there's no better framework in the world. Is it corrupt? Yes. Does it need to be fixed? Yes. What's the problem? Morals. Okay, morals. What's one of the hugest problems? The fact that we trade with countries that enslave their people. I mean, we can't compete with slaves. That's just the truth. All right, but we can change that. We can stop trading with China. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to be painful for us to stop trading with people. But ask yourself, because I don't think a lot of people do, ask yourself... Uh, Look at the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is this. Every one of us has a whole lot of slaves. Not, this isn't just a, you know, me saying, oh, no, this is the truth. The truth is, we have hundreds and hundreds and thousands of slaves, each one of us. They just live in other countries. And they're beaten, and they're starved, and they are children working in sweatshops, and they're killed, and... They work in conditions that we wouldn't imagine for dollars a day so that we can have our iPhones and that we can have our products and our materials. I mean, that's the truth. Each and every one of us has slaves. They're just, we don't have to whip them ourselves. We allow their own people to do that for them. But trust me. You know, that, that's the truth, and it sucks, but that, that's the truth, and we need to move away from that. That's our problem, all right? You can't, you can't make it in life successfully if you're not a moral human being and you don't do moral things. So we need to look at the situation. What's created the situation? Well, the fact that we have made decisions. Really, the fact that we've chosen to just be asleep and allow... A, a, greedy, a greedy group of people to make decisions for us that we probably wouldn't have made ourselves. <clears throat> but, you know, it's, it's silence in the face of evil is evil, is evil itself. That's, that's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And if you don't know him, then I, I totally, uh, I don't know the word, I lost the word, but you should check him out. Dietrich Bonhoeffer amazing. He was, a, <clears throat> he was a preacher in, uh, you know, he was clergy in Nazi Germany. And he stood up against Hitler and he stood up, he stood up against Nazis and it's just amazing. But anyway, uh, so what is the situation creating? You know, that's, that's the last part of this, I guess. What is the situation creating? Well, the situation is creating chaos. All right, it ha I don't, I am worried because I don't even really think it's begun yet, to be honest with you. I think it's going to get worse. I think 
they're trying to create us and them, us and them, you know, class warfare. Uh, but what's look at what's happening with the police, okay? What's happening with the police? Well, if you've been watching it, then you know that the police are just pepper spraying people and and, and beating people up, and 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 then you have to ask yourself, what what is what is that doesn't make sense to me, all right? Our police officers are not are not that. I'm not saying all of them aren't, because I'm sure there's some there's some bad ones, but there's some really good ones too. These are men who give. These are men and women, I'm sorry, men and women who who give a lot and don't get very much. I mean, that's just the truth. They risk their lives. If you look at these videos of, I mean, this is what's happening. They're being pushed against, pushed against, pushed against, and then when they push back, they're being painted as criminals, that they're being criminal, that they're, you know, and, and they're trying to, and these hardcore socialists, if you listen to them, this is what they're trying to create is, is, there, you'll, I've even seen it a few times. They're calling the cops the state. The state is against you. They're trying to create this hate towards cops. And, they, and it's the same thing they did in the 60s, you know, with the pigs, the pigs, the pigs. Well, now it's it's not really acceptable to, to say that yet because then that's going to bring people's memories back to 19, you know, the 60s. But that's what they're doing. They're creating discontent and a hate towards police officers. If you watch these videos, you'll notice that it just automatically goes into the cop the cop's behavior, but it never shows what provoked the police officer. So when you have that situation, you don't get to see the whole video other than what the police officers are doing in reaction to whatever had happened, then it's it's just false. It's not real. All right. If you don't see the whole video of what happened, then you can't believe it. And I choose not to believe that our police officers are are all racist, hate mongering killers or whatever. You know, I don't know what they're trying to paint them as. But what they're creating is separate. They're separating the poor, oppressed people from the state, and that creates two separate people who have discontent and hate for each other, and the disrespect explodes into chaos. And that's just the, the truth. But, I don't know, my, my main concern is that they have legitimate, they have legitimate uh, concerns, they have legitimate gripes, but what they're asking for is not legitimate, okay? What they're asking for is, and what they're being pushed into, is revolution. And that's what this is about, alright? It's just the truth. They're, it's, it's, this isn't the end of it, and it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you can go and watch the kids right now, and the majority of them don't have a clue why they're there. And they're just, they're being used. They're being used by socialist and radicals who want to cause chaos in order to make a situation that allows them to collapse the system and in doing so when you collapse the system you're able to put in something else and that's what they're trying to do and they're using our kids they're using our kids to as as useful idiots useful idiots i mean the same thing as the soviet simp <coughs> I mean, that's, look up, look it up, they're being used, they're being used to push other people's agendas, and some of them are indoctrinated so much that they have the same agendas, but they don't understand the reality of the situation, okay, they're, they're being misled, and that's just the truth, so don't, don't buy into it, is basically what I'm asking, don't, I love my family and I want you guys to know that we we have to stick together. We have to stick together because the country is is deteriorating and it, it, a lot of it just has to do with the morals and values of people and the loss of God and that's just the truth and yeah that's not politically correct or you know whatever but I don't care. I, I believe in God. Our country was founded <laughs> with a divine providence and uh, it's God, it's freedom for the world. Our, our country brought freedom to the world and we have a responsibility to stand up for what's right, regardless of whether it's uh, 
whether it's cool. Alright? Yeah, the protests are cool. The protests are a joke. They're an embarrassment, okay? It, it, it shows the, the ignorance and arrogance of our country. I mean, these kids are complaining that they don't have equal rights, that they don't have freedoms, that they don't have... Seriously? Seriously? You feel like you don't have equal rights? Do you know what that means? Do you want to, you know, the uh, poverty line in the United States is 22,000 for a four, over 22,000 for a four, four family, or four person family. It's a dollar a day in the rest of the world. $30 a month. It's $1,800 a month, more than $1,800 a month in the United States. That's our poverty line. The rest of the world, it's $30 a month. All right, they, there's countries and there's places in this planet that don't have a choice and don't, and, and can do anything they want in their power and they can never better their lives. We live in a country where we're handed freedom on a silver spoon and we don't even know it because we've never seen any different. Okay, look at the world. Look at the world and understand that we have a responsibility to uphold this and to do what we can to pass it to more of the world but also to stay out of their business if they don't want it alright there's big pieces of the world that don't want it don't want what we have it's not our job to impose it on them but it's also not our job to be involved with them if they're not going to respect the God-given rights of their people alright People have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, so long as it doesn't infringe on someone else's liberty or life. And if, the, if a country is not willing to respect that, to step back and allow people to have the rights that were given to them by God, government does not give you rights. Only God gives you rights. Nobody can take them from you. All right? They're not given by the government. They're not given by anyone. When you were born, God, God brought you into this world and gave you rights. And, and they're every human beings. And we don't have the right to take advantage of other people so much as they don't have the right to take advantage of ours. That's just the truth. And we need to really educate ourselves. We need to really stand up for what's right. It's not easy. It's not... It's not. It's it's hard. It's embarrassing. It, it's uncomfortable. It's, oh yeah, you're crazy. You're psycho. No, no I'm not. I believe this country was founded by God. I believe this country, when it was founded, it brought freedom to the world for the first time ever in its existence. Ever in earth, never in earth, had ever there been freedom until the United States of America. Every other government ever existed was brought in by force. This is the first government ever, ever, ever in the existence of planet Earth, <clears throat> as far as we know, that was accepted by the people and ratified by the people and created by the people. And in so doing, the power was held by the people. And that's freedom. That's liberty. And that's what we have. And we all have it. I don't care if you were born into poverty. I don't care if you were born rich. If you were born in the United States, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Whether you're the poorest kid on the street or whether you're the richest kid in the richest house, we were born with the silver spoon of liberty, with a choice to be and do what we want. The rest of the world doesn't have this. And the existence of Earth, in the existence of Earth as a planet, 95% of people have been slaves. That's the truth. 3% out of the 5 that were free are alive today. So before us, there was 2% of the world, the entire Earth's population ever, that actually made decisions for themselves. Alright, I could go on for days and days, and I probably already went on way too long, but I love you guys, and I really, I really 
hope that you're willing to stand for what's right in the face of embarrassment, in the face of diversity, in the face of political correctness. It, we need to be done with political correctedness. All right, there are, there are things in this country and there are forces in this country and people in this country that don't love the liberty we have and don't share the same values as us. It's not okay. And we don't have to pretend like it is anymore because that's what's killing us from the inside out. We gotta stand up for what's right.